Hey guys, it's Mike from Crushing Your Fear, your host. How are you doing today? Uh, how's this COVID stuff doing for you? There's a lot of people out there that are really affected by this. Um, you know, God forbid it is a virus. I know it exists and, and I know people that have passed away from it and it's a horrible thing. But there's a lot of people that are alive and healthy that are just scared and, um, you know, they're, they're kind of mask. They wear a mask, whatever they do. And um, so, you know, I was talking to a um, fellow Arate member, uh, Arate Syndicate, uh, EV Fats. Uh, that's the, uh, you know, uh, an entrepreneur group headed up by uh, Andy Frisilla and Milet. And we had her husband on who's a uh, radiologist. And I'm like, ooh, we got to get you guys on and talk about masks. So that's the uh, the title. This is Burn the Mask. I'm starting a group. Um, and we're going to all burn our masks because we don't like them anymore. But that's the way we are. So we had a great um, conversation with them, and I want to get to it. Hey, first, have you gone on iTunes? Give us a rating and review. That'd be awesome. Five stars. Everything will be okay. Um, You know, tell a friend. Tell 10 friends about this. Just trying to get the word out there and just help people uh, with their fears. I feel so sorry about these people. Um, but we, we talk about it more in our uh, interview with them. So let's let's go. Okay, we're here today with uh, Evie, Evie and Casey Fats. And Evie uh, is a member of Arte. I'm a member of the Arte Syndicate as well. And we were connected on Facebook. And then her husband's a radiologist. So he's in hospitals every day, and, and we were talking about the um, uh, mask, and also Evie is the uh, host of EML Radio, that's Eat, Move, Live, and that's a, a podcast, uh, which you can check out. Um, but like, like I said, Katie's a, uh, Casey is a radiologist, and we were talking about masks, and there's a whole thing behind, like the, the mask he was talking about getting fitted, and then, you know, it's just the whole mask thing bothers me. I know we have to wear it, you know, but... It's just, and now we talk about our kids. So I just, I said, let's, let's get on a pause. So how are you guys doing today? Great. How are you? Awesome. So listen, Wonderful. yeah. Thanks for having us. So, um, yeah, maybe Casey, uh, you it was interesting about the mask, uh, that you had to wear, or maybe you give us some background about yourself and how you got into it and, you know, what they do, they fit you for the mask that you have to wear in the hospital well, and then the, the masks that people wear, like yeah, they hang in their rearview mirrors and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we we're kind of talking about the mask thing and and there's then your your question was what is my stance and how do we do it at the hospital? And I said there in my mind there's kind of two things. I'm required by the hospital to wear a mask. Everybody in the hospital is required to wear a mask, so we do. Um I'm an interventional radiologist, so I have a fair amount of patient contact. I, you know, put a lot of central lines in people, do invasive procedures. So um, when we go in and work on COVID patients, which we have in the hospital, we wear our N95 masks. So in my mind, wearing a mask that you just buy at the fashion store or, you know, get from the box or make yourself is, is clearly different than an N95 mask. And I, I didn't really realize this until I got fitted for one. I didn't even know you had to get fitted for one, but we had to go down. You get this thing fitted around your face. They put a kind of a plastic hood over your face to make it airtight. And then they squirt an inhaler in there and ask if you can smell it or taste it. And if you can, it's not fitted right. And they work on it some more. I didn't realize that. So, um, yeah, I believe that uh, wearing an N95 mask when you're in a COVID patient's room doing a procedure on them is probably the prudent thing to do. But wearing these floppy fabric masks everywhere else probably doesn't really serve a whole lot of purpose. I know. And other then, than spreading fear. It's much fear. And this is our podcast and crushing your fear. And I see this and, you know, my, even my kids are where, you know, designing these masks. It's like a, it's like a designer mask, right? Like what's the purpose? I'm putting it on my face. It's like you're wearing a shirt or something. What are you doing? Like you're putting a cover on your face. Does it really serve a purpose? Um, and, and you, you're saying your about kids? my kids are eight, 12 and 14 okay. and they yeah, talk about fear. They have a lot of fear and, and I wear a mask and I'm like, I can't breathe. I got to just take it down a little bit, breathe through my nose. Dad, 
put your mask on. Make sure your whole face is covered. I'm like, I can't breathe. I can't. What do you want me to do? So, you know, and then you have to enter restaurants. And COVID only exists in the entryways in restaurants. I don't know how. But, you know, you can go in. You got to go in with a mask. Oh, it is. But then when you sit down at the table, you can take it off, eat, breathe, laugh, ha, ha, ha. So I don't understand that either. But, you know, Evie, what do you what do you think about the whole mask thing? Oh, well, I'm not shy about my opinions on this because I do see it and have seen it from really early stages as fear mongering. Um, I just yeah. know, for one, from my health and nutrition background and mindset background that your central nervous system responds in a fight or flight manner when you see someone with covering over their face, when that is not the norm in our society. So from the very get go, like people don't even realize that physiologically their body is having a response to seeing someone with a mask covering their face. Right. So whether or not you're consciously thinking, Oh, this is making me feel afraid. Your central nervous system is responding with fear. And when you start doing that to kids, that's when I really kind of started getting out there. And I usually am not really political about things on my social media accounts, not really my job. But when it comes to lifestyle and helping people overcome fear and live a life of fulfillment, which doesn't come from living a life of fear, I just felt like it was my duty to start really standing up and kind of trying to help people build some common sense and awareness about what this really was doing to all of us. It is. It's just instilling fear in everybody. And it's fear mongering. Like you're saying, it's the media. I'm sorry. Everybody tells me, Oh, it's, it's, it's it's a plot and, you know, conspiracy theory. I'm like, no, it's out there. All right. You look, you see the numbers, you see what's happening. There's more, you know, um, you know, there's cancer out there, which those numbers of those death numbers are huge. Astronaut dwarfs this stuff, right? You know, even yeah. even the regular flu dwarfs. This, you know, so what are yeah. we talking about here, and, and and why are we doing this, and why do we continue? And it's destroyed a whole bunch of businesses, people who are very hard workers, business for twenty years, restaurants that I went to, I can remember they're closed in a matter of months. Yeah. Um, Businesses collapsed. People are out of work. Unemployment numbers are just going up, and it's just kind of ridiculous. And I think we we need to kind of step back and see who's saying this stuff to us. And you know, usually it's you know, I guess the president is like, let the states. Well, it's supposed that's the way the U.S. is designed, right? Okay, the it's a state thing, so the governor has to figure it out and and tell you what to do. I can't get involved unless there's some violence and then we can send people in. But even in that case, a lot of the, you know, police departments are, well, we can just go everywhere with this thing. It's because of a mess, <laughs> right? But, but you could see how it just kind of mushrooms into different things. But, um, you know, about the fear uh, in kids, like I said, my, my daughter went home the other day and uh, she said she was short of breath all day. I'm like, well, did you wear your mask all day? And she's like, yeah, I, well, it's probably why you can't breathe. And, you know, and they're making them wear, they take breaks in school. She says, Oh dad, we take breaks. I'm like, I can't last with a mask for like 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm done. I can't do I'm it. With you. I can't either. I can't I, do I, it. I don't ever keep that thing. Like on. I, I go into a store and I race right through it. I grab everything and I'm like, I'm out. Cause I just gotta, I, I gotta get out and get some fresh air. I can't just stay in there and linger with a mask on. Um, and, and, and I see it affecting the kids and now I'm pissed off cause it's my kids. Okay. Right. When you screw up my kids, right. then I'm pissed off, you know? So I don't know. What, what do you think about that, Casey? Yeah, I've, I've been wearing a mask for 20 years. Cause I, you know, when we're in the cath lab and we're in a sterile environment, we, we wear a mask and there's clearly a difference between standing and doing a case, uh, doing a procedure with a mask on and, and walking around and living your life with the mask mask on i i get short of breath walking around and doing daily activities with a mask on it's clearly different than just standing there um so yeah i get it why the kids are short of breath not i mean you wear the mask it's your it's your profession and you're trying to protect yourself you know but also the the patient i guess it's a two-way right you know i mean if it's a sterile environment like kind of like a semi-operating room environment so Mm -hmm. we you know sterile a gown and glove and and wear mask we always have it wasn't a wasn't a COVID thing it's just the way it is um 
So it's just, but you've mentioned clearly it's a big difference than like when oh, you're yeah, out, we're yeah. traveling and walking through the airport with this mask on. It's yeah, like, walking around with a mask is a lot different than doing that for sure. There was and one guy in '95 yeah. is is steps beyond that. Yeah, there's one guy in Arate. Actually, he went on a plane and uh, he had the he he had just like a, a cloth thing on his face, and they're like, "No, sir, you have to wear a mask." And he's like, "I don't want to wear a mask. I, I got this. It's okay." It's like, sir, you got to wear a mask. So the, the captain went out and they t- the captain of the plane talked to him. He said, look, you got to put this mask on or we can't take off. And, and he's like, I, I don't want to do it. I got this. Is okay. So they had to get the police to come onto the plane. They oh, took geez. him and they escorted him out of the airport. <laughs> you know, and he posted a video. He's like, I just two, got kicked off my friends. plane. You know, so. Um, we have two friends also in Arate, um, close friends of ours that just recently they were traveling last weekend. And then they she had just mentioned this week that they received a letter from American Airlines that they're banned from the airline because they didn't keep it on the whole time yeah. that they were on the flight. So now they've got flight attendants policing and writing down people's names. Now, yeah. this is the kind of stuff for me, I, like from early on. I think some people thought I was over dramatic about it. I would get lots of messages and kind of hate mail of like, why are you making such a big deal out of this? Can't you just be neighborly and civil and protect everybody else's health by just wearing a mask? It's not that hard. What's your big issue with it? And I had mentioned like, I'm a big world war two buff. And it was like out of fear of sounding overly dramatic, like people's rights don't get taken away one swoop at a time, right? It's a slow drip of Mm. allowing people to, for one, be fearful. That's all you really have to do, right? Like Nazi Germany happened simply because everyday people were so afraid and they went along with a lot of things for a lot of years that they weren't okay with. And then slowly but surely, all of a sudden now we're killing 10 million Jews. Now, truly, I know I could go down a rabbit hole there and people think, well, you're just crazy. But I think now all these months later, People are realizing I'm not so crazy. We have now become like we've got citizens policing one another, fighting with one another over whether or not you're wearing a mask over your face, which still the science is just not there on that. Okay, it's really doing a whole lot of anything, which then you can also look at in a lab setting. Okay, maybe if someone never touched their mask, had it tightly down, it may help prevent some sneezes or coughs. Right. But you and I both are out in society and you realize that's not how people use them. People yeah. are touching their face halfway incessantly down their nose. halfway down here, halfway up, touching putting it on the nose. airline seat, then putting it on their face. So since the beginning, I have refused to wear that on the plane. I'll wear it to get on the plane because I have to travel for business. But once I'm on that plane, I'm like, just shove off and leave me alone. I'm not wearing that thing. And I'm not going to put some dirty piece of fabric (laughs) over my face. That's a sure way to get sick, right? Something I've carried around and put in my purse and put on an airline seat, taken into the bathroom with me. And now I'm supposed to put that on my face to protect my health and protect others. It's garbage. I feel like people are talking out of both sides of their mouth too. It's like, I I know there's truly people out there who are like deathly afraid of this. They, they really are. Um, oh. and there's probably some people out there who should be because they're, oh, of course you know, they, they have all the risk factors and they should stay home and, and do that. But, but I think the majority of people aren't that afraid of it. They just want to, to push the agenda of the mask and be able to tell somebody to do something. Because if you were really that afraid of this, uh, I mean, for me, if, if, if this was Ebola, uh, I wouldn't leave the house. No, no I, wouldn't really, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. Really scary that I was going to die from. Like if I was seeing I bodies on the streets, I'm like, dude, I go outside. Like, I would, I would lock down in the house. And there are people that do that. I mean, and okay, they're they're truly afraid, but I, I just don't get it. I, you know, it's, there's people. I went on a flight. I went on a couple flights. Actually, I've been on about since May. I've been on about nine flights, going around, and. You know, I've seen like a couple flights, ladies like or or people wearing top to bottom surgical. Like if you're going into a surgery room, like a, a, a ER nurse, like a o, o, what a OR nurse, right? Everything, the whole, the whole, yeah. everything, even the shoes, like the the freaking things that cover the shoes, and they have a a, a plastic guard. <laughs> I'm like, I, I feel so sorry for you, you know? Like, I feel, and Andy Frasilla said, you know, he says, you know, if we see those people, their their minds are just, like, shot, and they're just, like, so scared that they have to wear this stuff, and you should go over to them, and, you're not supposed to, but you should give them a hug. 
just to say, you know, it's okay. <laughs> That's what he said. You, you, just to say, it's okay. It's okay. Like, yeah. I feel so bad for them. And I, I've seen a couple of them. And um, even on coming back from, uh, I was in Brazil and I came back uh, and I had a mask on, but I had the ventilator little holes, right? And they said, no, that's not appropriate for the flight going back. Like, well, I wore this coming down here. I think the reason why, and they had to give me a mask to wear. But the reason why is because on the other side in Atlanta, the U.S. came on board and they checked everybody to make sure that they had the masks on. And that's the reason why they gave me the mask. I'm like, why are they making me do this? Every flight, you know, they knew somebody's going to check them. So they didn't want to get screwed. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it is. Everybody. And then when I landed in Atlanta, there was a small army of people. Like I, I went, and this was like five in the morning. Like I had people, I had people gu- guiding me towards the uh, the get my bag, and then questioning me. And then I'd go out into another hallway, and there'd be like ten people there, you know, just shepherding people. Like, why do you need ten people? Oh. Like, why do you need all these people getting? You know. I'm okay. And, you know, the, I'm like, I had to fill out forms and, you know, I, and, and I just, it's, it just seems crazy to me. Five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. <laughs> well, and I think one of the, you know, one of the major downsides of this too is that, you know, human nature is like, we like to be powerful <laughs> no matter who we are, right? That's just part of being human is that you want to be able to have a little control and a little power over someone. It's the ego. So now what we've done, we've given all of this new power to people that never had it before, never had any kind of power or say, right? They're at the bottom mm. of the rung in their career, right? I was just in Vegas this last week for, for work and they've gotten progressively worse there. Like I won't go back. I will not stay on the strip because it is a full on ghetto. Now they've completely wow. destroyed that city, destroyed it. Wow. It's the first time in 25 years I've ever felt like unsafe walking on the strip is early right? in the morning. Oh yeah. It's wow. crazy. I won't go back. I have my daughter with me, but anyway, literally walking through the casino I've got security guards that are no less than 100 pounds overweight. You can tell just looking at them. They've been lifetime <laughs> smokers, right? right? I'm a health and fitness expert, and they're going to police me on how I need to protect myself. I'm like, it was impossible for me to walk through there, but that's mm. what it is. You've now got people that are willing to be able to just boss the rest of us around cab driver that wouldn't go until I pulled my mask up, even though I was drinking a cup of coffee. He was like, well, I want you to pull it up each time you take a drink. So he wanted me to sit in the back of his cab and he wasn't going to go until I agreed to do that. Like this is a cab driver telling me how to manage my health. We've, we've lost our minds and we're giving a lot of power to a lot of people that shouldn't have it. But these people want this power because they have ego. Oh, totally. Right. Totally. It's the ego. Absolutely. Even the governors like these bizarre governors that are doing this stupid things uh mayors of cities like i think la is still locked down i gotta fly out there in the middle of uh, uh october i don't know They're like everything is like closed i think still <laughs> oh yeah nothing's open there <laughs> right we took an army trip a couple weeks well almost a month, month ago, ago now of down the oregon coast and northern california for lack of anything else to do uh, <laughs> we went from, we went from uh Oregon into California and it was like wow uh, it's like they fr- we walked into a pizza place and there was one person in there ordering and they it was like they lost their mind um because we walked in together and there was already somebody in there um oh, like, no, right, no, no, the, one person at a time like, one we, person at a time we got to turn around and go back to Oregon where they're oh. conservative it was crazy <laughs> when I went down to Florida I went to go visit my parents in Florida because they you know the whole COVID thing they're older and I'm like let me just fly down because it was panic you know in the family I'm like All right, I'm gonna fly down so I flew down and then uh I was walking in one of the grocery stores and I didn't know about this one directional I don't know if they have it by you like you have to walk down an aisle one way oh, and yeah. So I walked down this aisle. I didn't even know about it. And the guy's like, you're going the wrong way. I'm like, ha ha, this is so funny. <laughs> like, I thought it was a joke. And he's like, no, look, there's yeah. arrows on the floor. You're, not, you're going the wrong way. And I'm like, come on. So I, run, I yeah. went, and then I, I saw him. He went down the other arrow uh, aisle, and then I went the opposite way again. And he's like, you're going the wrong way. I'm like, <laughs> like, when the hell did they do that? And I'm like, what? You know, so. And what scientific basis is there that makes that? 
there is no science. That, you know, and then there's the six feet that. thing, six feet apart. Just people making up rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Making up these ridiculous, stupid rules, which. <laughs> like the Nobu water thing. Yeah. What? what tell yeah. me about that. Oh, yeah. So we were, I was going to dinner when we were in Vegas and um, my daughter and I walk into Nobu. That had been one of our favorite restaurants and the gal seats us and she says, um, we have a new regulation here that you have to keep your mask on even when you're at the table until you at least have water or something to drink in front of you. <laughs> like, let's think about that. So now I have a time specific. I have to have a glass of water at least in front of me or a beverage of some kind in order to take my mask off at my table. I couldn't even dignify it with a response. I just looked at her and long story short, like we'll never eat there again. We got up and we're like, we're out of here. And we went across to a steakhouse that actually is being reasonable and just kind of checking the boxes that they have to check because obviously the governor mandated it. But that place, like there's no way we'll never go back. Like what kind of, what kind of sense does that make? It makes none. And I'm not going to give my money and patronize businesses that aren't willing to use some common sense. No. I, I just don't go out anymore either like you. I don't watch the news because it's just toxic stuff. And a lot of people watch this news and saw fear. And then they have the headlines on the bottom of the screen. And, oh, my God, more deaths. And then Andy the Priscilla, the like, you got to listen. I don't know if you listen to his podcast, but he's, like, all over this stuff. And he's, like, the conspiracy. He's, like, a, not a conspiracy because of A, B, C. I'm like, you know what? He's right because they shift. They keep shifting. Depends on the oh the deaths and now they prove that there's really not a lot of deaths. Oh, people that got it. Oh, there's really not a lot of people that really got it. Oh, it's potential. I don't know what the hell it is. I, you probably know more, Casey. What it, what it is like the three categories, you know, and people getting the corona. You know, I the comorbidities <laughs> issue. I, yeah, obviously, people with comorbidities are highly susceptible to having a much poorer outcome. But I I've kind of lost a whole lot of interest in following it frankly i mean i i know in our in our area we've had i think in the whole five northern states of idaho we've had i want to say three thousand and change positive cases three thousand fifty three thousand sixty and we've had fifty three deaths so i mean you just do the math that's like one point seven one point eight percent um, no, and it's mostly people yeah. who've had some other type of uh, ailment. Oh, and you know, it was, some, and, it was, yeah. and it's people who were sick, right? They were you know, sick. It's, yeah. not, it's not healthy people that uh, you know died of it. But no. But the yeah. trouble is, it's, with it's even- hard to ferret that out. I mean, you can you can look at the statistics and say somebody who's on dialysis and is diabetic has a life expectancy of what I don't know, two years, five years. I don't know. Um, it's not that long. But then you throw COVID on top they're probably going to die. Right. But then you just attribute it to COVID. It's not, uh, it's not. Yeah. Florida, they were blaming motorcycle accidents. I don't know if you saw that, like some guy died in a motorcycle and they said, Oh, it's a COVID death. It's like, okay. Okay. But the trouble is when you try to talk about other people having health issues, then you're somehow insensitive and you're willing to, you know, denigrate human life because you like these people, their life isn't expendable. But that to me, like that's just a kind of a BS self virtuing kind of no, statement. That's my like, kids no too. one is no one's focusing on preventative health measures. Like if even at the highest level, if our government or the CDC wanted to truly end this, Mm -hmm. they would be recommending that people make sure that they get their vitamin D levels checked and they're not vitamin D deficient. Like 87% of the people that are dying from COVID are are vitamin D deficient and vitamin C is critical and zinc. You know, like if you listen to much of Joe Rogan, which I'm a huge fan, him and I tout exactly the same thing. It's like no one's talking about how to build your immune system because vaccine i don't know if you want to go through a like a fast track vaccine I, you couldn't pay me a gazillion dollars to put that vaccine in my body when it no. has not gone through animal testing and then it's being fast tracked people have no idea what I so, they're I feel, relying yeah. on like, right and yeah. we're going to end up with major health implications from all these people that inject themselves with this vaccine when it has not gone through extensive extensive critical human trials Absolutely. But nobody's talking about – so nobody really is trying to give a solution, right? We're just instilling more and more fear. But my question is always like, well, where does this end? Okay, mm. like like if you're going to wear a mask and you say this is the right thing to do and you really believe all the hype, I just want people to say to themselves like, so where does it end? 
we just wear a mask for the rest of our lives now? And we raise a generation of kids that are just think it's normal to walk around with mm-hmm. a piece of useless fabric over their face. And we destroy like the this doesn't go away. I hear people talk about it on the grocery store the other day. I was walking by and heard two gals talking and said, you know, well, I'm just really hoping this is gone by next year. And I, I didn't stop, but I wanted to stop and say, like, let's just think about how ignorant that statement is. You hope it's gone. It's a virus. It doesn't just go away. Does the flu go away? No. <laughs> like, we the flu isn't year. gone. Once a virus is here, it's no, here. So you we know. all need to be thinking about, do we continue to live in this fear or do we actually really collectively step back and go, okay, where do I want all of this to end? Mm. Casey, you're, you want to, you, you have something, I know you're. Well, I was, so back when we were talking, I forget what we were talking about, but it, it, it came into my mind, oh, we were talking about the comorbidities. It's, and, and every time you talk to somebody, they, they've got this story about, well, I, you know, I know this person, they were super healthy and, or this mm. person was really healthy and they died. And, and I, we've just got this skewed view of health anymore. It's like, it, we look at someone and as long as you're not overweight you you know either exercise or say you exercise and you're alive then you're healthy you're like a very healthy person and it's like not really you know it's uh you look at the labs of these people or i mean just for instance i i'm reading cts in the hospital lots of days and and uh, there's not a day that goes by when i don't see you know five six people on ct or ultrasound who have a fatty liver i mean and that's and and they're normal skinny looking people. You can tell from the scan they're not hugely overweight, but it's it's unhealthy. People people aren't as healthy as they look from the outside. And these people have these skewed thoughts that just because you're not overweight and you may or may not exercise or say you exercise that you're a picture of health. No, but but a majority of Americans are obese. Um, they don't take care right. of themselves. I, I know this whole. COVID thing that probably didn't help a lot of people. The, the amount of alcohol sold is like tripled, I think, over the past couple of months. Yeah. Netflix has just gone through the roof, right? Amazon stock has gone, has like tripled. Boeing stock fell fell off the cliff, you know, because nobody's traveling. Uh, but, you know, I mean, so Kate, like other, like you're in a hospital, I guess, pretty much every day, Casey, I guess, or? <clears throat> yeah, when I'm working, um, so, like, what what is the opinion of everybody in there? I mean, what do you see, <clears throat> like, in terms of their? Uh, I mean, you're, you you see these COVID cases, and I I think you know in, in hospitals that's where they go, and they got to be put on respirators, and like, what is their whole take on this whole thing? I mean, what what have you seen, like, the majority it's, of people? Is it a mix? Very, or, yeah, you know, um, we had uh, when this whole thing happened, or or kind of came to a head in what mid to late March um, we kind of went full on. I mean, we basically shut down the hospital, no emergent cases or Mm -hmm. no no elective cases. Um, We converted, you know, outpatient areas to COVID units and, and nothing happened basically. Um, (laughs) Just basically, you know, like turned down all the volumes. (laughs) We had just a couple (laughs) patients, you know, um, but I, I think it was probably the prudent thing to do. We no, absolutely. Done, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's better safe than sorry. But I, the, the, the problem I see is when you realize that it's not going down the way you thought it was, you kind of got to change course um, and do something different. And we, we have to a certain extent in the hospital. We've, we've gone back to doing, you know, basically we're back to normal. Essentially we're wearing okay. masks, but we're back to normal. Our volumes are back to normal. We've taken out the, we've reconverted the outpatient areas back to outpatient areas from COVID overflow units that we never used. Mm -hmm. I think currently we have uh, 10 COVID patients in house, three in the ICU, six in the ICU and one on the vent. We have 23 vents. So we're clearly not um, at critical levels and we never really have been. Um, But yeah, so every opinions are all over the board. There's people that are, you know, militant about, uh, the whole masks and the, you know, the way we do this, there's other people who feel the exact same we do, but yeah. So it's a mix. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> I, yeah, I, it's just, well, majority of the people, I'm very disappointed in a lot of people. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in a lot of people that I've known and the reaction that they've had on this whole thing. I'm just like, I thought, you know, I thought you were a smart person. <laughs> That's what I say. You know, I don't know. 
I, and a lot of people still are just upset with me and my, like my sister's very upset with me. She's like, wear a mask. Don't go out of the house. I'm like, come on enough. It's enough. Like people get crazy, you know, people get nuts. And then my kids are affected too. Like dad, well, I'm like, you can't get it. It's, it's not, oh, well we might get it and we'll pass it on to somebody else. And then an older person will die. This is what they're being infiltrated with this stuff. We're going to pass it on to somebody and then they're going to die. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out that we have our, in our house, we have an an apartment attached that my mother lives in. Um, And she is 79. She's relatively healthy, you know, not overweight. She doesn't have take any medications. Um, But Casey goes to the hospital every day and goes into rooms with COVID patients. He comes home he embraces his family just like he always have. We do not avoid my mom. The last thing we need to do for her as a single elderly woman living on her own is avoid her and isolate her. That is the worst thing that we could be doing for her health. So yeah. we're not reckless. And at first we were like, until we know exactly how this is all going to play out, we just didn't, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of things together with no. her, but we've gone back com- completely to normal. Like I oh, hug her every day. My daughter hugs her every night and gives her a kiss goodnight. And that's the best thing she can do for her grandmother. Right. And of course not. It, so, so this kind of just overinflated argument that you just don't care about others or you don't care no. about the elderly. If you're out there, it's just complete and utter crap. But this is what they're training kids to do. And they watch the social oh. media. I can't control them. Everybody has a phone. Everybody yeah. has an iPhone. They go on to whatever, you know, and they're spewing all this stuff to me. I'm like, where are you getting this stuff from? You know, and all of them, all the kids, you know, and um, uh, fear, but also you, you touched upon it. You know, people that have been married for years, like 25 years, 30 years, and their their spouse is in the hospital and they're dying. They're on their deathbed and she can't even go in and see them, right? Stuff like that. It's Stories absurd. like that. My friend's father was in a nursing home. You know, he had a bad accident and he just, he was recovering then the COVID came in and, and unfortunately got him, right? And he unfortunately passed away. And my, my friend was trying to find a funeral home to try to, you know, take care of him and bury him. He couldn't even find a funeral home. I'm in New York now. Uh, and the only thing they had was a slot at 3.30 in the morning where they can go to the funeral home and then follow the hearse to the burial site. They would bury him in and that's it. Like the last time they saw him was on a FaceTime call. That was it. Yeah. The father, really right? Really think about that. Someone's think entire about that. life, and think that's how that. they get to say goodbye. I saw him. I went to go visit him in the in the fall, and then he called me. He says, you know, my father passed away, and we buried I'm like, holy, what? Like, holy cow. Uh, so that, you know, it's just horrible stuff like that that you hear. But we look back on I this. Was, I think everybody's going to look back on this and say, what was this? You know, I know a lot of people don't realize, yeah, don't realize this now, but they will. They will. Yep. And it's unfortunate. The rising numbers of people, like the increased numbers of people that have dementia that are dying at this point too. I was watching, I was watching a video on it yesterday and I won't try to quote it because I can't remember the numbers, but it was something like as ridiculously high as like a 30 some percent increase in dement in deaths of people with dementia. Right. And it's because through isolation and loneliness that these people are looking at their grandkids through a glass window. And like that is the last thing that someone that has declining mental capacity should be exposed to loneliness, isolation. That just accelerates the thing, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah. The best thing that these people need is like interaction with their family and their grandchildren and not to be left completely alone. It's just insane. It's enough. It's screwing up my kids. So now I'm done. I used to be yeah. okay. But I'm, I'm, and I told you, and I want people to join my new Facebook group, BTM, Burn the Mask. I have Love a, it. I have a video. We're going to put the soundtrack to uh, Bring the Noise from Anthrax and uh, oh, Public <laughs> Enemy. We're going to splice that in. Oh. I got to figure out how to do that. And if they're willing, maybe that we could do a concert or something. That'd be awesome. Well, and I think it's important. I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> we laugh about those kind of things, but I really think it's important for those of us that have the opinions that we do is that we're not afraid to share them. 
right? Because I think a lot of people, I notice this when I get on a plane, like as soon as I take off my mask and my daughter takes off her mask, of which my daughter then said to me the first time we did it, she was like, mom, it feels like really empowering to just stand up for what you know is right. And I'm like, that a girl, that's what we do. And I don't care how many people look at us and she's Chinese. So the very first time we had these like kind of grumpy elderly yeah. white people sitting next to us that were really just mean mugging her. They were scowling at her. And I just told her, I said, you know, just lean over and tell them you just flew in from Wuhan. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right? But we notice as soon as we, that's how we deal with things. We're not She's putting up with other from crap, right? Yeah. I have to so, move. But we notice that other people are willing to take off their masks when they look around and see other people doing it. Yeah. So like, I'm glad that you recorded this and like, I'm glad you're going to do that Facebook group because it's all those little things that can help empower other people to go, you know what? I actually don't agree with this, but most people just agree with things because it's easier for them. Right. It's easier just to go along with it. That reminds me of that funny uh, when uh, when this whole thing kind of started, right when when Washington State put their their mask mandate into place where you had to wear a mask everywhere in public. We're we live in northern Idaho, so we fly out of Spokane, Washington at okay. our airport. Oh, uh, so we didn't we didn't have the mask thing going on in Idaho. And we had we were flying somewhere. We drove over to Spokane and went to the airport and obviously didn't have a mask with us because we were not used to wearing them here. Um, so we went through the whole check-in and, and going through the TSA line. And I noticed there was this relatively elderly woman. I think she was probably early 70s, 70s. just kept eyeing me. And I just knew she was going to jump all over me for not having a mask on. Right? And so I was, I was just getting ready for that. And uh, so I get through the whole, you know, the check-in thing. I'm picking up my bags on those, had a conveyor belt. And she comes up to me and she says, why, why aren't you wearing a mask? And I said, well, I don't have one. We're from Idaho and we don't have to wear masks there. So I, I don't have one with me. And she goes, and they're not making you? And she pulled hers down. She goes, this is great. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, wow, I didn't expect that. I'd give her a hug. <laughs> That's so awesome. But it's just yep. insane. It's insane. And, you know, it's just, I know we just got to move on. We got to move on. That's it. It's yep. just cause of carnage right yeah the and i said it in the beginning grant cardone i follow him and he said it in the beginning too in one of his podcasts like the fallout from the impact that this covid is going to have to the people like who who don't die of it is going to be much greater than the impact of the people who pass away And, and and we've seen it we've seen a lot of businesses fold People's lives have been ruined. Put it on TV. People's yeah, minds have been screwed up, right? Fear. Yeah. They have yeah. constant, you look at the TV, it's constant COVID numbers. I hear, I get texts on my phone, freaking like 20 texts a minute about my parents in Florida. They can't go out because of this or, oh my God, the, the numbers have gone up and I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, you can't fly here. You can't. See, you have to quarantine for two weeks if you fly to Florida now. I'm like, I'm not going. Then I'm not going to go. I'm yeah. not going. Um, you know. Well, and you, you've probably seen it on my social media account, but I had a daily ticker of how many people have died year to date from heart disease. Oh. So 359,000 people per year yeah. die of heart disease. It is. It's crazy. Yeah. Which. The vast majority of those cases are all lifestyle related, right? A poor diet, not good sleep hygiene, obesity, not taking care of themselves, too high of stress, right? Not having any kind of routine or peace or meditation in their life. Yeah. But nobody wants to, like, what if we put that up that on a ticker new on the ticker, bottom. right? There's 20, well, I figured it out. There's like 2,700 people per day of dying of heart disease. Mm. But nobody's talking about that. Right? No, that's, that's the stuff people should be afraid of, right? Which <laughs> leads to, McDonald's. yeah, which yeah. leads to the health um, thing, and I think that's what the problem is. People are not healthy; they're not eating correctly. They eat a lot of garbage. They drink a lot. They smoke, mm-hmm. and they're just not healthy. You talk about vitamin D. Go for a walk. A lot of people don't even go right. for a walk during this pandemic. Oh my God, I'm going to have, I'm going to get COVID if I go for a walk. Like I was jogging, I was running, and I see these stupid people wearing masks. They're jogging, right, the other way. Oh, yeah. We live on the lake, and there'd be people paddle boarding out on the lake with a mask. With a mask. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm going to swim out there and push you off that paddle board. <laughs> Sail out there and just run into them. Oh, my 
my goodness. There's your sake. COVID. <laughs> But I, you know, it's just you have to be healthy and you have to look at your life and, and what you're doing. And if you're scared, um, you know, if you have a disease or something like that, or I I'm, wear a mask and I don't want to be around you. Like, I don't want to be right. like, because I don't want to make you sick or die or whatever, or, you know, wear a mask and I'm, I'm 100% or even elderly wear people. Okay, home. fine. You know, if you want to wear a mask, I'm cool. But I see young kids, they force them to wear these stupid masks. Um, people in the stores. I can't go into a store and go shopping unless I wear a mask. Like you're saying on the airplanes. I mean, I wear a mask on the airplane. I do take it down once in a while, but they say put it up. So I put it up and then I just take it down again. <laughs> so it's okay. I'm like, oops, it fell. But have to be they'll, all the they'll have cops okay. at the other end. They'll have policemen at the other end to freaking arrest you if you don't have a mask on. So I'm like, yeah. all right, well, I really don't want to have this legal issue stuff, and I don't really have a lot of money now to defend myself in a court or, or get myself out of jail. So I'll just keep the mask on, I think. you know. So I, I just go yep. I go with it, but as soon as I'm off the plane, like, bang, I'm out. I don't want to know. If I'm outside or if I'm waiting for my bags, I'm like, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm getting my bag, and I'm going, thanks. Thank you. Yep. Have a nice day. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, it's unfortunate. People have to take care of themselves. So, you know, and um, just got to look at it and, 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 and watch, you know, watch your mayors and your governors. If you don't like what they're doing, vote these guys out, you know, because mostly they're egomaniacs for making you do this stuff. Yeah. You know, 100%. it's just the egos. If any positive could come from it, I think people will pay much more close attention to their local elections now than they ever did in the past. Get out there and vote, you know? You don't like yeah. it. Get these guys out because it's just Absolutely. they're forcing you they're forcing your businesses to close, they're forcing you to your kids to be scared and <clears throat> your lives to be altered and we live in the United States and we should be able to do podcasts like this and get it out there. I don't know, I'm going to put it out there. I don't care what anybody says. I really don't. What are you going to fire me? I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Me Actually, you should hire I can't me. Fire me, so I'm good. <laughs> if you like what I'm saying, get up, come on my podcast. Maybe we can figure something out. So, all right, guys. Well, I appreciate you being on today. You, you've uh, taken your time out of your busy schedules, and um, of course, awesome. Uh, Evie, how, how can they find your podcast and, and talk to you more? And- um, so I'm on all audio platforms and also YouTube channel, which is just at Evie Fats on social media as well. Um, evfats.com is the website where it has all of my podcasts there as well as all the other health forward programs and stuff that we head up. That's awesome. And, uh, yep. Casey, you're at the, uh, what, which hospital are you working for? Yeah. Uh, Kootenai, uh, medical center. I'm actually in a private radiology group, Kootenai, uh, imaging. Cool. You don't want to find me. You don't want to find him. We don't want to, we don't want to find, no, we don't want to, we don't want to find you. <laughs> But Evie, yeah, focus on Evie, yes. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate you guys being on again. I, um, yeah. You know, uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Join my group, BTM. You know it. <laughs> I'm going to send the post out. All right, thanks Thank a lot, guys. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was uh, Evie Fats and Casey Fats. They are, um, you know, Evie has the EML radio uh, eat, move, live. It's a podcast, and um, Casey's a radiologist. I'm like, you guys, we got to get you on, and <clears throat> a lot of good information from there, from them. Um, you know, they were in Idaho, and um, I guess the state really wasn't that that diligent with the masks, except for Costco, I guess that they were seeing, and you know, um, just kind of laying it out there, looking at the numbers and, and seeing exactly what, you know, kind of ramifications I, I, Hey, you know, when it came out, Hey, precaution, what the hell is this? Let's all step, take a step back, protect ourselves, shut everything down. Okay, fine. But then as time went on, we, we saw that the numbers were not there and, and it was just kind of blown out of proportion. And now the media has kind of taken it and there's a lot of fear mongering, you know, this election's coming up as a oh, conspiracy theory. I don't know. You got to look at this stuff and see if it makes sense. Question it and see if it makes sense. Deep in your heart, you know, does it make sense? You know the answer. You know, we talked about it. Now it's screwing with my kids, which I'm I'm not, I'm pissed off about. You know, when my daughter came home the other day, she's like shortness of breath all day, then hyperventilating. My, my ex-wife had to take her to the, you know, the MD, right? 
to see what the hell's wrong with her. I don't like this mask stuff. I just, it's, it's enough. And, um, that's my opinion. You have your opinion. I have mine. Uh, and there's a lot of more people that are thinking the way I'm thinking. They're starting a new Facebook group. It's called uh, BTM, Burn the Mask. Make a video burning your mask and put it on there. Post it, you know, and uh, let's end this because it just has to end. It's enough. If you're around people that are sick, you know, they have to wear a mask. You can wear a mask. That's cool. You don't want to transmit anything to them if you have it. I understand, but, you know, if we're out walking, we're outside, <laughs> you know, there's people still wearing masks, jogging with them. I'm like, what are you doing? You're inhaling your CO2. How could that be healthy for you? It's better just to sit on the couch, maybe watch Netflix. That might be more healthy for you. It, w- it would benefit you more than going out and running with a mask. I mean, come on. I just had enough of it. That's why I have to just, you know, take the stance and... If you want to join me, you can. If you if you think I'm crazy, then hey, that's your your opinion. But that's what I have for today. Take your mask off and burn it and post it on my group in Facebook. <laughs> Just do it. Just burn. Burn, baby, burn. Actually, I was trying to burn my mask, and, and the thing is flame retardant. So that's what I found out after I started to try to burn it. But it's okay. I put a couple holes in it. Um. What are you going to do? But that's, uh, I'm glad I had Evie and uh, Casey on. They're awesome people. And, uh, you know, if you have have conversations with your neighbors, you know, your friends, talk about this stuff. You know, talk about it. You know, try to uh, explain to them, you know, take a look at what's happened. We've been through this a couple months. Look at all the destruction it's done, you know, uh, to businesses, to people. I feel so sorry for these people. I see them on planes. They're covered head to toe, like they're going to surgery. You know, like an operating room nurse. Like they're covered head to toe. Like they have to because they're doing surgery. But these people are just going on a plane. (sighs) Man, too much. Okay. That's what I got for you. Uh, I wish you a great rest of the day. Please be safe. And, um, you know, we need to get out of this mask thing. And and crush your fear. Crush other people's fears too. Talk to them. Give them a hug. Shake hands again. I know people are starting to do that. That's awesome. If you bump elbows, guess what? The dirtiest part of your body is it's an elbow. So that's worse than shaking hands. Yeah, all right. Give me a rating and review on iTunes if you like this. Um, And I I wish you the best. Please be safe. And uh, we're going to talk to you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.